Hi, I'm Caleb. I'm a cardist, and I'm interviewing other cardists to see how and why they create, so we can learn how to grow as a community. Welcome to Cardistry Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cardistry Talk. Today, I'm joined by Ben Sherrill, who is a cardist. He most recently uh, dropped a solo video called Moonwalk and started a new account called My Playing Cards. Um, he's been running a YouTube for a while, and he's, he's been a part of the community for a while, so I'm really happy to have him here. Um, yeah, Ben, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Mm -hmm. um, so first question that I'm going to start off with that I kind of ask everybody um, is just the general one. How did you mm -hmm. kind of get started into uh, cardistry? Yeah, so uh, I started with magic, of course, like pretty much every other cardist. Uh, I was into magic for about six years. Well, about six years ago is when I started magic. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been doing it for a while, eventually switched to cardistry um, because I enjoyed uh, kind of like visual magic was what I was into at the time and like slights, you know, um, stuff that takes a lot of dexterity. So um, I really liked doing cardistry because it was kind of just the, the dexterity part. And I was like, why am I even practicing magic if, if all I care about is learning how to you know do these flourishes and I, I was learning like t uh what are they, like false cuts yeah. stuff um at the time so yeah i i eventually switched to magic like three years ago or, and switched to cardistry like three years ago um and i enjoy it a lot more than magic yeah that's awesome um so being in cardistry for three years most recently you went to uh the cardistry con i saw on your instagram the 2019 cardistry con so what's kind of like a highlight of going to an event like that and, and what's just some of the because that's something like a lot of artists want to go to so what, what's kind of cool and unique about this event um I, yeah i think cardistry con is is like you said um something that every cardist wants to go to so uh for me cardistry con um the the highlights had to have been just meeting new new cardists um it was crazy i i kind of explained to my friends that don't know what cardistry is i kind of uh explained it like um, going to Cardistry Con is, is kind of like seeing celebrities everywhere you walk. It's kind of like going to a city where everybody you know is someone you look up to, and it's it's just crazy. Um, and I, I always enjoyed, um, like, just meeting new people. I hung out with this kid uh, pretty much the whole time. We were kind of buddies at Cardistry Con. Um, and, yeah, just screening the videos. I mean, everything at Cardistry Con is kind of a highlight. It's It's awesome. Yeah, I have not gotten to go to one yet, so I'm very excited for hopefully a 2021 uh, Cardistry Con. Yeah, so for sure. I posted on Instagram uh, asking some people uh, what questions they would like me to ask you. Um, so I have a couple here from there. Um, one of the ones is kind of what is your biggest inspiration? Who is your biggest inspiration when it comes to Cardistry? Hmm, there's so many. Um, I think that's my biggest inspiration. Uh, it's probably Tobias Levin. Um, I, I, ever since I got into artistry, he was kind of the person I look up, looked up to the most. Uh, I learned all of his moves or not all of them, but as many as I could. Um, and yeah, he's just always, it, it's just his, uh, style and his persona he kind of has, um, is a huge inspiration to me. And I, I also really like all of her mm -hmm. um, pretty much any of those Danish cardists um yeah yeah they're all good and they've been doing it for a long time so like they yeah. have the mm -hmm. the pattern down the smoothness down like everything calculated yeah so they're insane so those are some great choices um another question i have is uh what is one of the favorite original moves that you have created hmm that's hard i've, I've created so many now um i think right now my favorite is this one called squire i can show you it's it's like this interlock uh i actually just posted it recently um it looks something like this oh hold on yeah something like this and then this comes through um so yeah that's something i kind of screwed it up but uh yeah that i i like uh this move just because it's um fairly easy for me to do it i would say like i can do it pretty consistently mm -hmm. um and 
normally when I'm filming uh, moves, it takes me forever to get a good take. And this one I got like third take, which is really nice. So uh, at the moment, I would say that that's my favorite. But uh, yeah, it changes all the time for me. Yeah, it's like you lose track too. Like with the amount of moves I've made, you lose track of them sometimes. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. what's new is kind of what's fresh. Um, so you kind of showed off the my playing cards right now. Um, I would like yeah. to talk about like moon moonwalk in that as well. Um, so just opening up with mm -hmm. moonwalk, um, saving up all those moves. Um, what was kind of the creative process in creating that video? Uh, yeah, it was it was a, uh, a work in progress for so long. Um, so I I started I started with this idea with the moon and I actually uh what made me want to make the moonwalk video was was these cards um so actually I was talking to um some cardists about uh uh like designing decks um cuz I know how much goes into it and I know I probably don't have the audience to be able to sell one mm -hmm. uh but it's been kind of a goal of mine cuz I also like collecting cards too um so it was kind of a goal of mine to create my own deck. Um, so after experimenting so long, uh, I spent like six months. I was finally able to make a design, um, which is kind of hard to see right now. It's a little overexposed, but uh, mm -hmm. that actually looks good, handles good, and um, is easy enough for me to make. So I ended up making this moon design because I'm a fan of simple designs. And um, so that was kind of the first step in and creating the whole video um and then obviously the moves i've been saving for a year and a half uh and i um i talked to some artists about um you know what moves i should should put in the video um i discluded i think four of them my original goal was to, to put 14 in the video um but i ended up putting 10 in the video because i wanted it to be kind of short enough to be rewatchable. um mm -hmm. I heard Noel say something about, about making videos rewatchable. Re um, so yeah, that's kind of what went into it, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Like talking about Noel too, cause I, I've kind of looked at his turbo cause that's kind of like the, mm -hmm. what most people would consider like the best solo performance video. And like I've yeah. analyzed that and then there's 14 moves exactly in, in, um, turbo. So like, Oh, there's 14. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So like that's a good number and being rewatchable too. That's something me and Cam were talking about um, re recently when we were working on the Squeezers V3 trailer was trying to make something that's more rewatchable than what they've done in the past. Um, so like yeah. being rewatchable mm -hmm. is very important. What was kind of some of the difficulties in making your first uh, deck of cards? Uh, there are a lot. So um I started off by actually using a pen. Um, that was my original idea. I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. Um, but I thought that if I could use a pen and make like a template almost, mm -hmm. uh, then I could basically kind of just like draw over the template. And then problems with that were, well, I actually had ink smearing all over. Um, and then I, I needed a finish on it to, to make sure that the ink stayed on. Um, so I had to mess around with like four or five different finishes. Um, and I ended up getting one that felt like the, the linen finish that USPCC does. Um, but I ended up, yeah, I ended up using that one. Um, and I uh, also ended up using an airbrush because I found that that worked a lot better. I could just spray over it and then get this, this design with a template on it. And um I'm still, there's still difficulties that I'm having to face with mass producing because this is the first deck I've made. I've only made one. Um, so, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about uh, selling them. And if I'm doing that, I have to be able to mass produce them. So now I'm going to have to get into like 3D printing templates and all sorts of stuff. So uh, when, when I'm creating something that's never been done before, um, I think that was the, the difficulty or the biggest difficulty as far as creating the deck. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so like you said earlier, you're, uh, you're a collector as well. Um, yeah. I mean, you I'm just looking at your room right now. You've got some really cool stuff going on with like the any once and the, the deck uh, yeah. wall. Mm -hmm. um, what are some cool displays that you've seen and what, what, what is a display that you're kind of most proud of? 
uh, like display as in card displays, like playing yeah. card displays. So card, anything card history related. Yeah. I, when you say display, I always think of like a, like the worm. A move, kind of yeah. Yeah. Um, My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. I think that the, that I'm the most proud of uh, this card wall is that was another thing I had to create from scratch. Um, I'm, I'm really into like uh, building stuff and, and, like engineering kind of stuff uh so that was very difficult my dad had to like help me get ideas for it and i also kind of made like a quick tutorial thing i guess so if if you guys are interested in in making one you can check that out um but yeah i i really like like that and it's it's cool to just be able to look at that wall that huge mm-hmm. display wall um but yeah I think that's that's my favorite one. Yeah, it's really cool um, to see like it in, interlocking with your room because um, yeah. that's something mm-hmm. you don't. At least when I first started cardistry, like a long time ago, that's something you didn't really see where it was like rooms just like with cardistry based stuff. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of cool if you're like I don't know if you're into video games a lot or not, but like I really like looking at video game room tours, like people that yeah, just have that massive stuff. collections. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what I want to eventually have with cardistry, just a room yeah. dedicated to cards and like all the brands. I think that'd be dope. So you're kind of already on your way. So it's very yeah, cool. yeah. I actually got inspired by uh, the art of play showroom. That's what made me want to make a whole like room, I guess, dedicated to cards. Um, and I've always been interested in that like showroom kind of thing. Ever since I went there, I thought that was so sick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great. I haven't been there, but I've seen your pictures and I've seen other pictures. Um, so yeah, that's cool. it's a really cool area. Yeah. I also like that we're event like we're seeing now, like with Fontaine and like with the art of play, like there's actually like stores and like pop-ups that are more, you know, yeah, no, that's crazy that yeah. you can visit. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've made now over 20 videos on your YouTube account. Um, is there any that stick out to you as like a favorite that you've made and maybe one that was a little bit more difficult or, uh, to make so kind of a high and a low? Yeah. Um, so I think my favorite one I've made is moonwalk. Um, that has been over a year and a half, a year and a half in the making. And I wanted it to be like exactly how I envisioned it. And I think I did that pretty well with, with all all that went into it um i also enjoy this video i made like last summer i think uh it's called creating a cardistry move in an hour um and that was really difficult for me um because i spent a lot of time on my my creations and um it was it was really refreshing to be able to create something that people actually enjoyed i've gotten some feedback of people that really like that move and even want a tutorial for it um and I created that in just over an hour, which was a fun thing to do. Um, and yeah, those are just some, some that stick out to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really like the idea of that video. Um, just like setting out an allotted amount of time to try to be creative and yeah. just that concept in general, not even as a video can be an extremely helpful tool. Like saying like, mm-hmm. I only have this much time, so I got to make the most of it. Yeah. Um, so I really like the idea of that video. I also like really like some of the deck collections and a lot of the other stuff you do. Um, I'm yeah, a big thanks. fan of YouTube and like there's not a lot as much cardistry content as I would like outside of performances. So like I really enjoy like deck collections and some of the stuff you've, you've done in the past. Um, it's also why I'm kind of posting to YouTube right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I've, I've talked to people about that. Like, everything's on Instagram and I, I love YouTube. It's the best platform in my opinion. And, uh, I think more cardistry needs to be on there, especially if we want to reach more people. Yeah. Reaching different um, services is, is, is really would be helpful. I think what's different about YouTube too, is that there's more of a long stay appeal for your videos. Like they continue yeah. to get views even mm-hmm. with Instagram, at least it, it happens a little bit, but I don't think as much as YouTube, Um, yeah definitely instagram is very instantaneous you'll get a lot of feedback and a lot of results but then it doesn't it's not as much interaction in the long run Mm -hmm. yeah i've I've seen that with my my youtube videos because some of them i kind of cringe at like 
looking at my, uh, even that art of play tour. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing when I made that. And, uh, and then that one like still continues to rank, which is bad in a, in the way I don't like, like the video, but it's cool. Cause I know this moonwalk video didn't get a ton of attention, but it, it always grows over time. So, um, that's, that's really interesting about YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, um, what was I going to say? I had a good thing to say and now it's gone. Um, oh yeah. So like with my car street, like with my interviews right now, at least, um, mm -hmm. like they're still getting reviews. Like people will find my channel and then they'll watch my other ones I've made. So like when yeah. I was originally posting them, they were getting like 40, 50 views and now they're like a hundred. I'm like, okay, these are still getting watched. It's weird. Um, yeah. Cause like mm -hmm. I'm used to posting something and then it's instantaneous. Um, yeah. So, um, with the creating a cardistry move from scratch, um, what is kind of goes into your creative process and making a move? Do you have any thought process? Is it just kind of free form? Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's, that's another tough question because it's different from, for each move for me. Um, I would say as far as like packet cuts, which is kind of my favorite, uh, thing to create um i i always start off with an opener which i've heard some people don't don't like doing that but i've always done that um i want to i want to create something that's interesting in the beginning and then um and then usually i'll go to a closer but sometimes i'll i'll um find something in the middle but uh yeah I, i've i've noticed my creative process tends to be making an opener then a closer and then I just open it and close it for like month, months, a month or months sometimes, depending on the move. Um, and then eventually I will end up uh, creating something in the middle. Um, and I think that that tends to work for me really well because if I've got something good at the end in the beginning, then um, I've noticed that it's a lot easier to, to, to bounce or to make ideas um, as far as creating like something in the middle for me, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never heard of somebody that does that. It's just, uh, it's just something that I've kind of always done. Yeah. And that's kind of why I like asking this question. Cause I feel like most people have like different ways of going about making a move. Like I've never heard yeah. that before, but it kind of makes sense that you like, you have a starting point and then you have to kind of find out how it reaches the end point. So you kind of mm -hmm. have to connect the two in the middle there. So it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you have a, a pretty big deck collection, like we've discussed, yeah. uh, <laughs> too big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel that like I haven't been collecting that long, but I feel like I have too many at this point, at least new ones. Mm -hmm. Um, what are some of your favorite decks at the moment? Yeah. Well, um, I, I love the echoes. Uh, I love that Taiwan stock. Um, uh, also the fontaine aqua berries are they handle really good um i also really like the missing new york the new one that they came out with the ink mm -hmm. deck i just love that design um yeah I, I tend to like red red colors in decks that's just really appealing to me usually um and yeah i'm looking at my wall to see what other decks um i like the japan souvenirs also they're mm -hmm. they're really simple uh, but they look so good in motion. Yeah. I think what you see too with a lot of decks is like if they're more complex in design, sometimes they don't look as good in motion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like the Theory 11 decks. I mean, I've been collecting for like way longer than I've been doing cardistry. I've been collecting for like seven years now. So uh, the, the um, Theory 11 decks is what I started off with. And I never use those anymore. I, I only geared towards simple design mm -hmm. but that's just me i've seen cardists that use theory 11 so. yeah it's weird i've talked about this on the show before but like theory 11 used to be like heavily in the cardistry community yeah mm -hmm. dimitri and andre jeek and like they used to have like cardistry trailers and it's kind of weird that they've become more of like a everyday man brand now yeah yeah yeah, it's it's weird how they've evolved. I know that they used to be very cardistry oriented. Oriented. Um, I know Chase made like videos for them, 
I mean, yeah. Zach did too. Yeah, I mean, that's that how Zach got his start. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, also, sorry if it looks like I'm looking down all the time. Like my DSLR is higher. I'm just not realizing it because this is my first time using it. Um, uh, I was wondering how the quality was that good. You're using a DSLR. That's that's all. Awesome. Yeah, Canon has a like a webcam feature now that you can plug your DSLR and use it as a webcam if you have the right uh, download the program. It's pretty new. It's actually pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. So, do you have any topics that you would want to talk about? I I guess something that I think it's kind of uh, like or how would I say it? something that people just don't talk about a lot and I think is very, very important in car industry is, is like video editing and filmmaking. Um, I'm, I'm a huge film guy. Like that's, that's what I enjoy the most. You can probably tell just how I lit this thing. Um, that's like super important to me when I'm, when I'm creating a video uh, is, is how it's going to be presented and edited. So I, I think it's really interesting to, uh, to be able to, to, to have an idea when you're filming and then know that how it's going to be edited. Cause before, when I did cardistry, before I edited stuff, um, I, th- I always tried to, uh, kind of create like, well, I, I guess I would, uh, try to make, make a video and then edit it. But now I'm like, know what it's going to be like before I go into it. So I, I think that that's really important for people that, have never made a video on their own um, is to know exactly what it's going to look like before editing, if that makes any sense. But uh, yeah, I think that that's just something that people don't talk about very much. Yeah. I think not necessarily like planning out every scene. I mean, you definitely oh, yeah, can do that, true. but like having a vision of the kind of vibe you want and like, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and like maybe having like a few like key shots that you know you want to have. Yeah. Um, like the song too is super important. Yeah. Before you edit it. Or before you film it. Mm-hmm. Especially because you can know like what beats to hit, like what points of the song kind of stand yeah. out and like where you can match up your cardistry with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with lighting and like, you know, editing and everything you say too, like that's something that I'm trying to learn at the moment. I'm very not um, a photography or video type guy. It's stuff I'm learning right now. But like, you can have a really good move and if you don't show it off right, like it might not get a lot of traction. Yeah. Yeah. So angles. Yeah. Angles are so important. Yeah. Angles. So like learning that stuff, if you like want to spread your cardistry to other people is you kind of, it's kind of a have to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always have thought of cardistry as a video based art form. And I mean, I've heard people that kind of argue that say, no, no, it's, it's a performance art. And yes, it is a performance art at the end of the day, but the way you present it is all about video. Um, so that's why I think it's really awesome that a lot of artists have like video skills. And I'm even thinking of going into video as a profession. So uh, in, in cardistry brought me there. So I think that that's really, really a cool part of cardistry. Yeah. And if you like, if you look at Cardis, there's a lot of interlap between like videography and like filmmakers. Cause like Shano went to school for a video uh, filmmaking. So did Cam Toner. And like, there's mm-hmm. just a ton of people that are into photography and, and the people that stand out usually have some type of experience with it. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, uh, it's interesting to see how a lot of Cardis have very similar hobbies being like, a lot of times photography and a lot of time skateboarding. Um, yeah, I'm into what skateboarding also. Yeah. yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Like I used to skateboard in middle school. I don't now, but mm-hmm. um, it's kind of interesting that we all have a lot of similar interests. Yeah, yeah. I, I've i seen that. Um, I've seen that a lot of cars skateboard, like Leo Flores skateboards. Um, Nate, I think Nathan Stitcher does. I don't know. I can't remember exactly who, but I, I have seen a lot of, artists do um that are into that so mm-hmm. it's a good point at the end of the show i usually like to do what i call a rapid round of questions which are a bunch of questions random in nature and the goal is just to answer them as quick as possible they can be about literally anything some of it's cardistry some of it's not so jump into that and Sweet. i will get uh spin the wheel app so i know that these questions are truly random but the first one I got to open with, the one that everybody wants to know, um, 
toilet paper. Does it go over or under? Oh, okay. I've heard this question. Um, over. Okay. Sure. Yep. Good answer. I don't know why that's become a staple. Like two or three people were like, you got to ask the toilet paper question. So now I have to do it every show. So yeah. I'm sorry if you guys are getting tired of that question. <laughs> There's a couple people that are very passionate about it. Um, we're waiting for the first person to say under. Yeah, that's, that's not going to come. I don't think. <laughs> Maybe, Hopefully not. But, um, yeah. we're, we're trying to find the alien. That's, uh, as designed as a human uh favorite yeah. unoriginal move so a move you haven't created hmm. yeah I, I like learning people's moves a lot too um i think it changes all the time i think fission by yang chan my favorite right now mm -hmm. it's yeah it's, i'll just try to show it it's kind of hard i don't know if i'll be able to do it every time but uh like something yeah, I failed that. I failed that bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like the opening. I don't know if I've seen this. Yeah, it's awesome. Something like that. Very sloppy, but uh, uh, you get the point. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the opening of that a lot. Uh, do you have a favorite movie? Yes, I, I like the movie Sling Blade. Um, I actually named one of my moves after that movie. Awesome. Uh, favorite type of food? Um, I like sushi. Any kind of sushi, really. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Just, that's just how I am, though. All right. This is a two-parter. Um, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, I, I have thought about this before. Um, I would have super speed because with super speed, you can have a bunch of different powers, like flying, Tele basically teleporting. I mean, it's not 100% teleporting, but mm -hmm. you can also go back in time. And yeah, definitely super speed. Okay. And then the follow-up, would you use it for good or evil? Mm, I would use it for good. Good. But, All right. Yeah. Okay. Describe your absolute perfect day. Going to Cardistry Con, um, <laughs> meeting all my favorite cardists, uh, showcasing video there, uh, going out to eat sushi with um, some friends, and yeah, that sounds like a perfect day to me. It's a great answer. If you could have coffee with any Disney character, who would it be? That's kind of a weird question. Hmm. I don't. I don't watch much Disney stuff, so. Uh, Hmm. I'm trying to think of is is Shrek Disney? <laughs> That's no, DreamWorks. Yeah, he's DreamWorks. If you don't know uh, many Disney, we can just say uh, any person. Yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> I can't think of Disney. I'm Mickey Mouse, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, if an actor portrayed you in a movie, who would you want it to be? Hmm. I think Bill Skarsgård, the guy that plays uh, Pennywise. Yeah, know, he's, he's great. He's a good actor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And then we'll end on this question. Um, Android or iPhone? Um, well, like I said before, I'm a video person, so I, I have to go with, uh, with Apple. Mm -hmm. Just because the software it makes, the, it makes the videos look so good. All right. Ben, thanks for uh, the rapid round of questions. I think that went great. Um, yeah, at the no end problem. of the show, I like to roll out the red carpet, which is what my way of saying just, is there anything that you would like to promote or anything you would like to, uh, last nugget you might want to give the audience? Mm, um, if you guys want to check out my, uh, my, my, my playing cards thing, I'm really trying to work on that. I put a lot of work into it, so I'd really appreciate you check that out. Um, and just check out my YouTube channel and Instagram. And mm -hmm. That's pretty much everything I, I've got. Yeah, so I'll link all that stuff down in the description. If you guys are interested, uh, make sure to check it out. He's doing some really awesome stuff. Um, ben, thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. I hope everybody has a wonderful day, and we'll see you. See Bye. ya.
Awesome.